Okay, we have here today a really interesting integral. This one's from the UK integration, B problem number nine. We have the integral from one to infinity of x minus the floor of x over x to the fourth dx. Okay, now to get started with this, I'm not quite ready to deal with the floor function yet, but what we can do, just because we have a minus sign here, we can actually split this up into two integrals, and you can just kind of see that the first one to the left, this is actually gonna be pretty easy. So when we do that for the first one, we're going from infinity, sorry, we're going from one to infinity here, then for x over x to the fourth, that's going to be 1 over x cubed. I'll write that as x to the minus 3 dx, just so that we can use power rule right here. Now notice for the second part, what we're going to have is we're going to have the floor function of x over x to the fourth. Well, for the floor function, the floor always returns an integer, but if we break up our bounds, then we're going to be able to simplify this easier. So let's just see how this is going to go. I'm going to break this up into multiple integrals. So for like the first one, we'll just go from 1 to 2. And then what's gonna happen, the floor in that area between one and two, it's gonna round us down to the next highest integer and that's just gonna be one. So for this first one, we're just gonna have one over x to the fourth dx. And for the second one, we'll do something, basically the same thing. We'll have this one go from two to three. Then when our x value is between two and three, the floor is always gonna round us down to two. That's gonna be our lower bound. And so this one's gonna become two, two over x to the fourth. And now we're gonna have to go all the way to infinity with this. What's going to happen in each of these integrals is the value in the numerator is going to be the same thing as what we have for this lower bound here. But now for this first integral, we can just go ahead and integrate this with the power rule because this one's going to be easy. So when we do that, this is going to become 1 over minus 1 over 2 x squared. We're just going to, need to evaluate from 1 to infinity. And then here for this next part, what I want to do is, since all these integrals are going to be kind of the same, we can generalize them. Maybe we'll just kind of like take a look at one of these. So what's going to happen is in each case, we're going to be integrating from some value n, and then the upper bound is just going to differ by 1. So our upper bound is just going to be n plus 1. And then like we see here, the value in the numerator is going to be the same as this lower bound. So we're going to end up with, this is just going to be n over x to the fourth dx. And what's happening here is we're going to be summing this. So we can write this as a summation, where the first one, the n value is just going to be 1. So we're starting n equals 1, and this is going all the way to infinity. But now here for this n value, we can just, that's a constant value, so we can just bring that up front. We can just write this over here, and then we can kind of come over to the side and integrate this. So when we do that, this is actually just going to be the same. This isn't going to be any harder than this one right here. So we can write this, well, the integral from n to n plus 1, I can write this as x to the minus 4 dx. Then from here, I can just go ahead and integrate this. This is going to become minus 1 over 3x cubed and we're just gonna be evaluating it from n to n plus one. When we plug in n plus one, let's write it, I'll bring it like a minus one third in front, and then this is gonna become just n plus one cubed. And then for the second part, minus times minus here is gonna be a plus one over three, plugging in an n, it's gonna be one over three n cubed. So now let's just take this value, we can plug it back in over here. But now from here, let's take this minus sign and distribute it inside the sum. So that's gonna take this minus, turn this one to a plus, turn this one to a minus here. Distribute the n back in, so then we'll have an n here in the numerator. But then when I distribute the n in here, I can just cancel with one of these, and this is gonna become here an n squared. And then coming back and dealing with this part, just notice because we have x squared in the denominator, when you evaluate at infinity, this is clearly going to zero. You evaluate at 1 for the second piece, minus times minus is plus, plugging in 1, we just get 1 half out front here. Okay, now on the rewrite, I actually broke this up into two sums now. Now one other thing, we have this 1 third on both these, or this 3 in the denominator. I can bring that outside of the sum, so I can take that here and write it as a 1 third here, and do the same thing over here, create a 1 third in front, and remove this. And now at this point, you may recognize this value right here. This is a famous one. This is actually the Basel problem. And we know the value of this. This is actually known to be the value pi squared over 6. So really all we need to do now to finish is just kind of focus on this piece here in the middle. And what I actually want to do in this is an index change because I don't really like having n plus 1 here. I want to have something, I want to create that as just n and then I can divide it into the numerator. Well, when you do this, it actually works exactly the same way as a u substitution on a definite integral. But just because they're a lot simpler because we're just usually shifting things one way or the other, we don't really formally do it out that way. So in order to do this quickly, what I can do is everything here in the expression, I'm going to subtract one for it. So this here is going to become just an n right here. But when you do that, you also have to update the index. If you subtract one here, you have to add one here. Then what's going to happen is this is going to transform to n minus one here. 
This is just gonna become an N. And I need to change this right here from a one to a two. So now when I go ahead and rewrite this, we have our one half in front still. I'm gonna bring this over. Now that we've simplified all this, this is gonna become, I'm gonna kind of leave it unreduced and you'll see why in a moment. So we'll just leave it as one third times pi squared over six. But now that we have this as an n cubed, we can divide it into the numerator and split this into two sums. So let's see what happens when we do that. So for this first one, we're gonna have one third. We'll have this sum, n over n cubed, that's gonna give me just one over n squared here. Basically like this, but we have a different index going on. We're starting at two now. And then for the second piece with this minus one, I'll distribute that to the one third. So now we have minus one third, we'll have the sum, and this is gonna just become one over n cubed. But now focusing on this piece right here, we notice it's really close to this. We wanna be able to use this value that we found earlier. Well, what I can do is force that by just changing this back to a one. Now, I don't wanna change it because what we did here, we just added another term. We added this n equals one term. If you plug one in here, one over one squared, that's just gonna be one. So we actually added one here. What I'll do is I'll just subtract it just so that I'm not changing it. And I actually wanna do the exact same thing right here. I'm gonna force this to be a one. So then we just plug that in, this is still one here. We added one, I'm just gonna subtract it off. So now it's the same thing. But now this right here, this is exactly this. So we know this value is gonna be pi squared over six. And now I think we just need to distribute everything out to see what we're left with. So we have our one half here, minus one third pi squared over six. Then here we're gonna have a plus one third pi squared over six. We didn't really even have to know this value because this is gonna just cancel with this. Now distributing in one third here, we get minus one third. And then here, I'm gonna go out of order. Minus one third times minus one gives me a plus one third, but those cancel and that's just zero. And all we're left with at the end is just this minus one third and this sum of one over n cubed. But now at this point, I've gone about as far as I can because I don't have a really good way to simplify this. The only thing I can do here is get an estimated value and express this in terms of the Riemann zeta function. Okay, so we have our formula over here to the right. And I know it doesn't really do a lot in this case, because I mean, it's just telling us what we already know. The formula is exactly what we have here. The only thing is our S value for this is just gonna be this three here. So we can just write this as the Riemann zeta function at three. Now you can get an approximate value for this on well from alpha. I looked it up, I found it to be something like 1.202. But to match the solution, the answer key, I'm just gonna express my final solution as one half minus one third Riemann zeta function at three. Okay, there you have it. Great problem from the UK integration B, sample problem number nine. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.